switched on my radio, I heard nothing but noise. Spent all this money on all these toys. My tower is high, so my signal you should not lose. But when the numbers are low, I get the bottom of the cycle blues. Hi, I'm Jim W6LG, your ham radio Elmer here on YouTube. Welcome to my radio room in Rockland, California. I received a nice letter, email from VA3DCB Dennis in Canada, and he asks a very interesting question. And it's and he says, uh, I have a Kenwood TS2000 uh, and a Kenwood TS870 and a Daiwa CN901HP in line between the transceivers and the antenna. Also a similar setup on UHF VHF. He goes on to say, I've been told by some hams here that I should not keep the meters hooked up all the time because I would be losing too many dB or power through them. Is this true? Well, um, let's talk about that. Uh, the Daiwa meter uh, is a good meter and there's a, uh, there are several devices like that. And the way they work is to simply use uh, a little, um, I'm bringing one up on the screen now, basically a, a section that's maybe an inch to two inches long. Um, there's a wire that goes through two ferrite cores and wire is coiled around those cores. There's two, one on the left and one on the right as you can see in the picture. And this is a mock-up, um, and I photoshopped parts of it and eliminated some other devices on the board just to get down to the basics. So there's an in and an out, and the reason for the two coils is one senses the current going one direction, one senses the current going the other direction. So one is forward, one is reverse. Um, the wires that come off the turns uh, go to some diodes. Those diodes are um, something like a 1 in 34, a, uh, um, a low voltage germanium diode, and it rectifies that small voltage. And then that drives some other electronics. In some cases, it would go directly to a meter. Um, in this case, it has some other things to uh, measure peak envelope power. So one core is for one direction, one core is for the other, forward, reverse. The diodes rectify and drive the meter in essence. So what happens is, as the designer, of, as the designers of this device, they've done a very short piece of what looks like coax with the cores around it. And the idea being that it didn't create a change in impedance in the feed line. So it's 50 ohms in, 50 ohms coming out. The insertion loss is nothing. And one way to think about that might be to consider that in the picture, I know it looks big, but it's maybe an inch to two inches long, closer to an inch. Think about that one inch compared to the wavelength on even 10 meters. Um, you know, a 10 meter dipole is about 16 feet and that's a half wavelength. So 10 meters, 32 feet, and this is just a little portion of a wavelength. So it doesn't really affect anything at all. You can leave them in all the time um, in the background, not that you can easily see it, but behind me, I've got uh, my station and I have two watt meters in line all the time. Uh, their job is to alert me if something goes wrong. So if I'm transmitting and the SWR climbs above a certain threshold, what the device will make a sound and it will also interrupt the push to talk line so I can no longer key the transceiver. The idea being that it keeps me from transmitting should there be a fault. And you can set um, the ones in array solution, the others from uh, N8LP. You can set the threshold for that alarm at two to one, two and a half to one. I think one and a half to one is a low side and other numbers so that you don't if you're running an amplifier, you don't want to be transmitting into a high SWR. Um, if you are 
uh, inadvertently keying an amplifier, let's say on um, RTTY or some other mode, and it's going into a high SWR, there's potential for damaging the band switch if it's a tube amplifier. Um, the tubes, uh, the, the loading capacitor, the tuning capacitor, the tank coil, all kinds of damage can be done if the SWR is really high. So the short answer is it doesn't affect, uh, there's no loss in watts going through that watt meter. And two, there's no change in the SWR because of the watt meter. And three, it's a good idea to have it in line all the time so that if there is a fault, you can see it. If you don't have the kind of um, SWR meter or watt meter that has an alarm in it, at least keep it on so that if something does go wrong, you're apt to see it. So I have it right in front of me, right next to the transceiver, above the transceiver. So as I'm transmitting, I'm looking at that watt meter. Dennis, I hope that helps. Thanks for uh, asking the question. It was a good one. If you have a question um, on uh, QRZ.com, the email address is good. Um, keep the question short so I can cover it in a video, and I'll try to do some uh, some more answers to those kinds of things. In the past, I've been answering them uh, privately, but I think it's better to, to share some of these things. If you haven't subscribed, think about doing it. Check that box, and I'm working on a bunch of other videos, including one with uh, an amplifier that I'm building. 73, this is Jim W6LG in Rockland, California. Thanks for watching. See you the next time. Bye-bye.